Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. My name is Kathy Brox and this is the LUTG Radio Show. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Amen, amen, amen. Glory to God. Um, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, for thou art worthy of all the glory, the honor, the power, and the praise. We thank you, Lord God, for this day. For you are wonderful in this place. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jehovah Jireh. Thank you, Lord God Almighty. Praise be unto your name. Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. Lord, for thou art worthy. Amen. I thank you, Lord God, for blessing this uh, broadcast. Speak through me, O God. Open up uh, the word, Lord God, that we may gain understanding, Father. For you alone are worthy. Hallelujah. So I have been battling uh, with the enemy, but I know that it is not my fight. I know that this battle belongs to the Lord and I am restored. Not just to what I was before, but far greater, far greater. For God is able. And that being said, we are going to talk about restoring. This message is called Jesus Restores. This is all about restoration. And in restoring a thing, we got to know that we must be bold and go before the Lord with thanksgiving. Thank you, Father. Lord, for thou art worthy of all the glory and the honor. You are the sovereign Lord. The blood of Jesus is my access to you, O Lord God. And I access your heart all day long, day and night will I be before you. I will not leave you. I will not forsake you. You said that you will never leave nor forsake me. And I trust you. Oh God, Lord God, I trust you with my heart. I trust you with my life and those whom I love. I trust you, God. For you, Lord God, have not given me a spirit of fear. For God has not given me, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. You are entitled to power, love, and a sound mind. All those things come from the Lord. A beloved, beloved above all things, I wish that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospers. Third John and two. God loves you. God loves you. And he wants you blessed. God loves you and he wants you blessed. I want to read to you, I'm reading from the book of Jeremiah chapter 30. It says, the word came to Jeremiah from the Lord saying, thus speak of the Lord God of Israel saying, write all these things that I have spoken unto thee in a book. For lo, the days come, saith the Lord. That I will bring again the captivity of my people, Israel and Judah, saith the Lord, and I will cause them to return to the land that I gave to their fathers and they shall possess it. And these are the words of the Lord spake concerning Israel and concerning Judah. Now, this is something that you got to understand. The enemy is causing people to leave this earth, to give up the ghost prematurely by pretending to be light, by pretending to be Jesus and people of the light, which is Jesus. 
Christians. He's going to them in the image of God and pretending to be him. He's sending demons. Demon spirits. They have the ability. They, they, they're worshipers. And spirits, you can touch them. And they feel like flesh. But God gives you the ability to identify and to discern what is who is with him, meaning those that are alive and what is against them. Those are the things that are dead. And their their goal is to get you if they couldn't prevent you from being born. The goal is to get you out of this earth so that you do not bring about the things that are written in your book of life. For those things that are written in your book of life will prosper you and bless you and bless and prosper others. And so he's giving you all sicknesses and diseases and doubt is the worst of all. Because when you are in doubt, you are in fear and you will not speak the truth, which is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Verse five says. For thus saith the Lord, we have heard a voice of trembling, of fear, and not of peace. Ask ye now, and see whether a man doth travail with child. Wherefore do I see every man with his hands on his loins, as a woman in travail, and all faces are turned into paleness? Alas, for that day is great. So that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. Hear me. For he shall be saved out of it. For it shall come to pass. That's restoration and deliverance. Let me let the Lord speak. For it shall come to pass that in the days say of the Lord of hosts that I will break his yoke from off thy neck. And will burst he burst thy bonds, and the and strangers shall no more serve themselves of him. Freedom, 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 restored to peace and greatness and salvation and joy and love and power. But they shall serve the Lord their God and David their king, whom I will raise up unto them. Therefore, fear thou not, O my servant Jacob, saith the Lord, neither be dismayed, O Israel, for lo, I will save thee from afar and thy seed from the land of their captivity and Jacob shall return and shall be in rest and be quiet and none shall make him afraid to be in captivity is slavery to be without employment or to be without resources to start your own company is a financial enslavement to be sick is to be enslaved in sickness and in death, in fear, to not pray for yourself, to not receive prayer from the Lord God Almighty, to not trust him is to be enslaved in the mind. If anyone comes to you and said, may I pray for you? Ask them, are they praying in the name of Jesus Christ, the son of the most high God? Are they saved in the name of Jesus Christ, the son of the most high God? Ask them what scriptures are they relying on? Ask them to read those scriptures, to say those scriptures. Ask the Lord God Almighty to reveal to you if this person is with you or against you if they are with the Lord God Almighty or against you because if they are against God they are against you you 
You are not to fear and you are not to tremble. For God is not double minded. But the enemy and his followers are double minded. Verse 11, for I am with thee, said the Lord, to save thee, though I make a full end of all nations, whether I have scattered thee, yet I will not make a, I will, that I will, yet I will not make a full end of thee, but I will correct thee in measure and will not leave thee altogether unpunished. And this is for those that have believed not in God. For thus saith the Lord. He's even saving those that didn't believe. He's giving you an opportunity for salvation. For thus saith the Lord. Thy bruise is incurable and thy wound is grievous. There is none to plead thy cause that thou mayest be bound up. Thou hast no healing medicines. All thy lovers have forgotten thee. They seek thee not. For I have wounded thee with the wound of an enemy, with the chastisement of a cruel one for the multitude of thine iniquity. I told you it's because of sin, because thy sins were increased. Why criest thou for thine affliction? Thy sorrow is incurable for the multitude of thine iniquity because of thy sins were increased. I have done these things unto thee. Therefore. All they that devour thee shall be devoured and all thy adversaries, every one of them shall go into captivity and they that spoil thee shall be a spoil and all they that prey upon thee, I will give for a prey. God is taking vengeance on behalf of the call. Those that are in Christ Jesus are being restored. Even those that strayed away, God is giving you an opportunity for restoration. For I will restore health unto thee. I will restore health unto thee. I will heal thee of thy wounds, saith the Lord, because they call thee an outcast, saying, This is Zion, whom no man seeketh after. Because they denied God, he wanted to prove to, to, to those that doubted him and to his enemies that his word changes not. The blood of Jesus is more than enough. Thus saith the Lord, behold, I will bring against the captivity of Jacob's tent and have mercy on his dwelling places. And the city shall be builded upon her own heap and the palace shall remain after the manner thereof. Israel shall stand and out of them shall proceed thanksgiving and the voice of them that make merry and I will multiply them and they shall not be few. I will also glorify them and they shall not be small. In the book of Revelation, it talks about the, those that are around Christ Jesus, around the throne of God. Those who believe are so many that not even God can count. He can count y'all. But there are so many, he stopped counting. And they are all worshiping him. I should say, John reporting those did not count. God, God knows how many it is, but John could not count those that were around him because there were so many. Their children also shall be as a... A four time and their congregation shall be established before me and I will punish all the and I will punish all that oppress them. God is fighting your battles and their nobles shall be of themselves and their governor shall proceed from the midst of them and I will cause him to draw near and he shall approach unto me. For who is this that engaged his heart to approach unto me, saith the Lord? This is why I have been asking you politicians. If you say you believe in Jesus, then ask him what is in your book so that you can do it. Because you are losing your positions in 
the poly in in the United States Congress and Senate and in every office, low and high, you are losing your positions. Because you are going against God, you do not worship him in spirit and in truth, and you are going against his chosen people. You are going against Israel because you say in your heart and you say in your mouth, but there are other beliefs other than Jesus. God has said there are other things out there, but there is none that is more truer than he. For he is alive and those things that are being worshipped are dead. The Lord Jesus is alive and he wants you to know that he is coming for his bride and he is replacing those that don't believe in him, that do not care for his chosen. He is replacing you. If he has to take you by death, he will take you by death. If he has to remove you from office, he will remove you from office. But he is saying to you, I love you and I want you to fulfill what I have written in your book. This is about salvation. This is about your life. And he has put terrors in the offices so that you can see that he is for real. He does not want them there, but he has put them there because you have failed to heed his word. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. No thing comes before him. You can give people the right to choose, but you do not get the right to deny Christ. You do not have the right to kill. You have made nothing. You do not have the right to tell women that they cannot take care of themselves instead of preventing them from having abortions. Don't worry about it. Restore the word of God back to the schools. Allow the word of God to be preached on the streets. Allow the word of God to be spoken, the name of Jesus to be spoken in the businesses Put it on public buildings and I can tell you this, that these women will not open their legs to random men. They will wait for their husbands. These men will not go out finding any and everything to insert and to drop their seed, but they will wait for their wives because they will have the identity of Jesus Christ because they will be allowed to hear the truth and the gospel. They will be restored to the Father. Restoration. It's for every Jew and every Gentile. This whole Bible is about restoring the Jews to Jesus. Restoring the Jews to Yahweh, Jehovah God, through the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus is the door. And it is open for the body of Christ, for those that will believe Jesus. It's open to every Jew and every Gentile that will believe Jesus. If you would believe Jesus, Jews and Gentiles. Restoration is yours and you shall fulfill every word that is written in your book. And ye shall be my people. Praise the Lord. I'm going to read verse 21 over for you again. It says, and the nobles shall be of themselves and their governor shall proceed, proceed from the midst of them. And I will cause them to draw near. He wants you to draw near. He shall approach unto me. For who is this that engage his heart to approach unto me and say of the Lord? And ye shall be my people and I will be your God. Behold, the whirlwind of the Lord goeth forth with fury. A continuing whirlwind, it shall fall with pain upon the head of the wicked. The fierce anger of the Lord shall not return until he have done it and until he have performed the intent of his heart in the latter days, ye shall consider it. For God has not given you a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. 
restore. He wants to restore you. Romans 15 and 13. Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that ye may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. You need the Holy Ghost, also called the Holy Spirit. For restoration, you need the Holy Spirit, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Genesis 20 and 7. Now, therefore, restore the man his wife, for he is a prophet, and he shall pray for thee, and thou shall live. And if thou restore her not, know thou that thou shalt surely die. Thou and all that are thine do not touch God's anointed and do his prophet no harm. You will have to restore to him seven times what you have done. And if you choose not, you will die. You and all your household and he will get everything that you got, which is more than seven times. Restore. God is restoring his people. Genesis 20 and 14. And Abimelech took sheep and oxen and men servants and women servants and gave them unto Abraham. Means the father of nations. And restored him, Sarah, his wife. Genesis 40 and 13. Yet within three days shall Pharaoh lift up thine head and restore thee unto thy place. And thou shalt deliver Pharaoh's cup into his hand after the former manner. Then thou wast his butler. God will restore a thing so that he can bless his people. Thou will restore a thing so that he can bless his people. Genesis 42, 25. Then Joseph commanded to fill their sacks with corn and to restore every man's money into his sack and to give them provisions for the way. And thus did he unto them. People of God, God is about to restore the money that was stolen from you, that was taken from you, that you were overcharged for. You've been overcharged for mortgages and house mortgages and cars and houses and food and clothes and gas and credit cards and God is going to pay going to give you enough to pay off all your credit cards. Going to restore the money that the credit cards company overcharged you in interest. Going to restore you all the money that was taken from you in taxes. Every, every inheritance that was stolen from you, every raise that was stolen from you, every bonus that was stolen from you, even if you don't even work there anymore, for that is yours. God is a restore. He's about to restore the blessings unto you. Glory to God. And you will find it. And Genesis 42, 28 says, and he said unto his brethren, my money is restored. Oh, hallelujah. God puts the money and the restored things before your eyes and in your hands. Fear not, for it is God. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Believe God for the restoration. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Exodus 22 and 4. If the theft be certainly found in his hand alive, whether it be ox or ass or sheep, he shall restore double. If a man steals from you, he has to restore double to you. If somebody took your poems and made music from your poems and did not even pay you a thing. 
God is going to restore you. If they use, if they, if God told them to give you something and they said no, instead they used a legal term to see if you knew what it was. And if you had no knowledge of it, they stole from you anyway. Going against the heart of God, he must restore to you double what he earned from it. What he and all those that were associated with it earned from it. Each and every one of them must restore what they stole from you. For each and every one of them went against the heart of God, knowing that you needed to be blessed. God had a plan to bless them even more than what they had received, but they dared, they refused to hear him. He is speaking to their hearts now. Restore. Restore. Give. And it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, running over, shall men give into your bosom. Restore what you stole according to what you made. Restore. Restore. Some of you are saying, well, I used that money to start a business. Well, congratulations. Now you have the revenue to restore what you stole. For do you love God or do you love money? Restore what you stole. You felt. You felt the pressure of your actions And you cast it aside. You know that I am speaking the truth. You felt the pressure from God of what you did. And you still cast that pressure aside. That business was supposed to be a pleasure to you. And it was difficult and growing. And you had stress and anxiety. And in your heart you know you should restore. Stealing and not doing what God told you to do to restore is the same as unforgiveness. It has the same weight. You are accountable to God. Would you not forgive a man if God told you to forgive a man? If you would forgive a man when God told you to forgive a man, why will you not restore a man when God told you to restore? To God be all the glory. To God be all the glory. To God be all the glory. Leviticus 6 and 5, or all that about which he hath sworn falsely, he shall even restore it in the principle and shall add the fifth part more thereunto and give it unto him to whom it appertaineth in the day of his trespass offering. God is telling you how much to restore. 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 God has not given you a spirit of fear. Restore. Restore. For you folks that at the first of the month you go grocery shopping and you find yourself spending more than you intended to spend, it is a spirit. I canceled it. And there are many people where that is a spirit to prevent the transfer of wealth that God called forth. They are still stealing from the poor. It is a spirit. Counsel that spirit in your life. Look in your cabinets and your refrigerator and look and see what you truly need. Look on your shelves and see what you truly need. 
and only buy what you truly need. Use cash. Only put 20 bucks on that card and don't spend no more. Use a card that only has 20 bucks on it or whatever you need for what you're going to get. And believe God to restore you. The wealth transfer is supposed to come to those that don't have any, to those that believe. You're not supposed to be poor for 30, for 29 days out of the month. Every day you're supposed to be blessed abundantly. Every day you're supposed to be blessed abundantly. That is your mortgages and your rents paid. Your 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 car payments and insurance paid. Food plenty. Water plenty. Peace plenty. God wants to restore you. God wants to restore you. In Leviticus, <clears throat> Leviticus, Leviticus 25 and 27 says, Then let him count the years of the sale thereof and restore the overplus unto the man to whom he sold it. That he may return unto his possession. If somebody stole your stuff and went and took it to a pawn shop. And what have they used that money for? How have they profited from that? However they profited. They got to restore you everything. In the form of currency. The item and the currency over plus. Leviticus 24 and 21. And he that killeth a beast, a beast, he shall restore it. It means you got to go and buy another one. And he that killeth a man, he shall be put to death. If you have killed somebody, whether it's from putting your knee on, on their neck or telling someone else to do it, you need Jesus. For your time is not long upon this earth. You need God. Hallelujah. Some of you are relying on Jubilee and to say that you don't have the money to restore, and you're asking. That you be forgiven. That's in Genesis and Le- Leviticus 25 and 28. But if he be not able to restore it to him, then that which he that which is sold shall remain in the land of him that have bought it unto the year of Jubilee. And in and in the Jubilee it shall go out, and he shall return unto his possession. God is saying that even if they, the person that stole it, Cannot return to you what he did. Then God will return it to you. Believe God. Believe God. Believe God. God wants to return to you salvation. He wants to restore to you the face of the Father. The only way you can see the face of Jehovah God, Yahweh, Jehovah Adonai, the Lord God, I am Elohim. The only way you can see his face is through the blood of Jesus. Jesus is the doorway. Jesus is the doorway to the Father. The only way you can see him is through Jesus. He strengthens us. Isaiah 41 and 10, fear, fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea. I will help thee, yea. I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. His righteousness is the Lord God, Jesus, is his son. It's his son. 
The Lord wants to come to you. He wants to fellowship with you. After these things, Genesis 15 and 1, after these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abraham in a vision saying, fear not, Abram, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. God wants to bless you. The Lord God Almighty wants to bless you. The Lord God Almighty wants to bless you. The Lord wants to bless you. He wants to give you salvation for it is yours for the having. Salvation is yours. And God wants to bless you. He wants to know, will you receive the blessings of the Lord? Will you receive his peace? For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Jesus loves you, beloved, and he wants you to be blessed. He wants you to be blessed. Hebrews 12 and 1 says, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth, which doeth, which doth so easily beset us. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Come unto Jesus. Come unto Jesus. Come unto Jesus. God loves you. He wants you in his perfect peace. He wants you to be forgiven of all your sins. He paid for it on the cross through the blood of Jesus. He provided the sacrifice. The Lord provided the sacrifice so that we would be saved. So that we would have an opportunity for salvation. So that we could be forgiven of all our sins. Each and every sin. He that believeth on him is not condemned. But he that believeth that believeth not is condemned already. That's John 3 18. Because he have not redeemed, because he have because he have not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation. That light is coming to the world and men love of darkness rather than light because that because their deeds were evil for everyone that doeth evil hateth the light. Neither cometh to the light lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light that his deeds may be made manifest that they are wrought in God. When we believe God, we have no fear. We have no fear. And we will come to the Lord God Almighty with all boldness. We will come into his courts with praise. Because we have no fear. Because we know that we are in God. And when you are in God, you are not terrified of what will happen to you. Because you know that the Lord only wants to bless you. If you want to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and be forgiven of your sins, repeat this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, I ask you to forgive me of all my sins. I confess my sins before you this day. I give up my past life with Satan. And close every door to all Satan's devices. I confess Jesus as the Lord of my life. Thank you for saving me. And for bringing me back to where I once was. 
From this day forward, Lord Jesus, I will be sensitive to how you feel. I won't hurt you. I will obey you, Lord Jesus. I ask you to present me to Jehovah in your name. Lord Jesus, I believe with my heart. I confess with my mouth that you rose from the dead, that I am saved and receive you today wholeheartedly, 100%. Make me a light in a dark place. And from this day forward, I will leave this place and share you with everyone I meet and everyone I know. It's commitment, Jesus. I will get this world for you. I pray this prayer to the Father in the name of Jesus. I receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Hold your hands up. I receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus with evidence of speaking in tongues for the edifying of the body of Christ Jesus by the will of Jehovah God with interpretation of tongues. Amen. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Speaking in tongues is an utterance from the Holy Spirit. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord God, I love you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, for your word. Thank you. Lord, for you are a shield and our buckler. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke that spirit of arthritis and I speak healing to your hands and to your whole body. For everyone that has an ear to hear, let them hear. Their health is theirs. Hallelujah. For anyone afflicted with arthritis, whether it be in their hands or in their whole or any any other part of their body. I rebuke arthritis now in the name of Jesus and speak healing to your whole body. In the name of Jesus. I rebuke sickness in your bodies. And speak healing, restoration to your whole bodies. Restored to the glory of the Lord. He said that health is yours. Hallelujah. Health is yours. That's what the word says. He said he will restore your health. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In the name of Jesus. For restoring that health. Of man for those that would believe. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Let your testimonies be their witness, O Lord God. Put your witness in their bodies, O Father. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I rebuke poor vision and blindness and speak keen sight. And full health to your eyes. Glory to God. In the name of Jesus. Deaf ears open. Hallelujah. Tongues loose with speech. Hallelujah. Those that have no tongue. In the name of Jesus. Receive the tongue that the Lord made just for you. Be restored, be healed now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you. For you listening to LUTG Radio's WKKP Digital Broadcasting, my name is Kathy Brox and this is LUTG Radio. Jesus Restores is the title of this message. LUTGradio.com. Amen. Amen. 
Just listen for the Lord. Listen for the voice of God.